Today we have a really exciting step forward in our progress towards Dyneema rigging. Solving something that we knew we wanted to solve, we weren't quite sure if it was going to work and today we've made the breakthrough that we, means this is going to really help I think a lot of people who are looking at Dyneema rigging and want to save money and reduce chances of failure. Let's look at what we're trying to solve and how we're doing it. Woo, turn the camera around, right. This is from our old mast, our old rigging from the main mast. And so for our lower shrouds, we have a hole here, bolt goes through the mast, and then you have two stays via these two temp uh, plates. There's no toggle to give articulation side to side, only fore and aft by being able to swivel uh, through there. So it's not quite ideal. And if you watch the latest Rigging Doctor one on building a new Dyneema in a four stay where he's talking about the importance of toggles and so on, as didn't have them, but what we've come up with is immensely simpler. Bit of good news from yesterday is we've now moved both our masts right next to the boat to work on and making sure with these boards that the spreaders go through that the mast stays vertical so that any bend is in the, the correct direction rather than side to side. Okay, our main mast, that's the foot. Spreaders, we're only a single spreader rig and here you can see where the bolt goes through. This is where that toggle I just showed you, or that um, plate uh, goes. So we attach two lower shrouds to this point. One goes slightly forward, one goes slightly aft. And as we continue up towards the top of the main mast, we find a hole this time with this plate and compression tube. This is for the cap shroud, so only one shroud needs to be attached here. And we have the mast head, and this is where the backstay starts as a single one between those two plates, and it came about six feet and then split. Okay, here alongside we have our mizzen mast, that's the top of the mast, where we have those holes where the plate has been taken off at the moment but that has the cap shroud and the running backstay each side. A bit further down the mast, we, and this one doesn't have a compression tube in it, so we want to refit one. This is for the four stays, one per side, that go forward, and then untangle myself from the mast. Here, we have where the spreader is attached, and we have where the lower one shroud is. So there's only one lower shroud on the mizzen mast. And that's where we can see our solution for building replacements. Now, when you have traditional stainless steel rigging with these plates, you have got lots and lots of points of failure. You've got these, we call them split pins in the UK. Americans call them cotter pins. Cotter pins were from bike chain sets, very old fashioned and uh, so anyway, they're wrong. They're split pins, but you've always got to be worried and keep checking that your split pins don't fall out because obviously if that falls out, the um, pin here can fall out, your shroud will no longer be attached. Then you've got the bolt going through the mast that has a split pin to stop the nut undoing, but you've got the bolt, the plate, the split pin, the pin, and the swaged fitting in this case to the shroud, all points of potential failure. We're gonna get rid of nearly all of those. What we are going to be using is this 60 millimeter FR4 rod. Now, the company we buy our FR4 didn't sell this originally when we were looking, and so uh, we never thought of using it. Now it's available, this is what's going to transform your way of attaching Dyneema shrouds to the mast. And I've done a mock-up here with a bit of timber where I'm checking the angles. So, 
what do we have? We have a bolt going through the mast. In our case, half inch, 13 millimeter is exact replacement for what was there before. We've then got I've two bits of wood which are tests. These will be made from that FR4 rod. And we cut an angle here, so that's 15 degree angle, or 14 and a half degrees actually, if I'm pedantic, and the, the shroud is as varied between 11 and 13 degrees, we think. Angle this very slightly more, so that it's unlikely the rope will slide off the end. Instead of a rectangular piece of wood, it will be that circular FR4, but angled in that way. We are fitting onto this one a 9mm stay, so we will have a loop in the end of the 9mm stay that will slip over that 60mm tube and be slightly angled at the top here. Out of the sheet of thin FR4 we've got, we're going to make an end plate. Oop. How many hands do you need to hold your uh, stuff? We'll make an end plate that will go up just a little bit. And that's so that here, there's no way we want that rope to fall off when we're, it's loose and we're putting out the mast. An end plate will come up like where my fingers are and have a little hole in the end of the end plate so we can lash, put a lashing around the spreader so that it's completely blocked, the rope can't fall off this way. This is beautifully round. That shape's a beautiful shape to put your dining loop on that's not going to chafe or be damaged by too tight a bend. We have a nylon washer next to the mast to provide separation electrically from the stainless steel washer and then we have the FR4, another stainless steel washer and the bolt. And all we have to do to make this spreader, we've just got to buy the bolt, the washers and so on, buy the FR4 and cut it to the right angle there so that this is just wider than the Dyneema shroud when it's inside um, a chafe sleeve. So Dyneema loop with a chafe sleeve just drops over this, can't come out because of the end plate. Supposing uh, the FR4 fails completely, which it's really tough, it's got good UV stability, it shouldn't fail, but if it did, the line is still over the bolt. So it's not going off, it's not going anywhere, it'll suddenly become a couple of centimetres longer and you'll get some slack so you know there's a problem, but you don't have any pins or anything to worry about. The only thing that's, that's needed to stop all this coming apart will be, we're using a nylock washer here, and we will drill and put a pin through the bolt. So that won't be able to come off, therefore this can't come off, there's no nothing so few points of failure and dodging the range of storms and sorry about the howling wind i'm ready to try cutting my first tang i've put the fr4 into the saw from kind of the non-obvious direction normally i feed from here with the clamp there and the reason being that you can only angle the blade that way i've angled it i've cut wood and tested, measured the angle with my magic uh, electric angle measurer. And by cutting it this way, I can measure the critical dimension for me, which is going to be the top of the tang. And that is set to about 14 millimeters. That's a nine millimeter shroud plus the uh, anti-chafe shroud around it, a little bit of wiggle room. Rather than do all my geometry which I can't do and I have to keep getting Jane to do for me and work out how long it would be at the the base um, I've angled it this way so let's uh, cut that now um, I'll just set the camera up to record that And there we have our first tang. 
Let's go, I've got to think now about the drilling the hole through it. So let's just have a quick look at that. Stand under the boat to avoid the rain. Okay, so I'm using the drill press so that I can get a, a reasonably accurate thing. Now, what I actually want to do is to put this onto the drill press, that slopey side down. So it rests on the slopey side. That's the side that will rest against the mast. The key thing I've got to check here Normally, for all the ones apart from those just under our spreaders, I would be aiming to drill not quite in the centre. If I drill slightly higher than centre, then gravity will keep this the right way up. For the ones that are close to the spreader, I've got to go a little bit closer to that edge, to this top edge, because of the height gap i don't have enough space for my rope if i did it in the middle this is uh that would be 30 from there from the middle of there to there and i've only got about 30 clearance to the spreader i want to cut it there but the rain has just come in so i'm just going to move the tools out of the rain i'll do it in a minute rain's passed i'm going for my first attempt a 15 millimeter gap at this side It'll be slightly less at the lower side, and I think that should just be enough for the rope to pass over it. Let's have a go. Obviously, I'm fortunate I'm in the boatyard. I've got a pillar drill. I've got a mitre saw, but I'm confident that we can do this with hand tools if we're in the field. Accuracy may not be quite as good, but it should be perfectly possible to do. Okay, I could have been, I think, a little bit further away uh, from this edge. I might need to make an extra one. Um, you can only buy the rod in 50, 500 millimetre length, so I've got plenty to work with. And the wear question will be how long before the stainless steel bolt wears through 12 millimetres of FR4. I think it's going to be a very long time, especially with, on our mizzen where the loads are pretty low, especially again on the lower shroud, which is the shroud that's low, loaded less. Let's see what this looks like on the bolt. Oh, where's my bolt? Here's my bolt. Take off the very high tech wooden experiment. Remember, I've still got to build the end plate for this which will stop the line sliding off it and I think that is going to be okay not to be uh, squared off I might I can always make a little washer that's shaped that is one side ready let's go and slide that into the into the mask That goes like that. Obviously this won't rotate as easily once the uh, bolt's done tight. And that's, as I thought, it's a bigger gap than I really need for this shroud. But that looks to me really simple and strong and very easy to attach a Dyneema rigging to. End plate here and there's no way that line is going to fall off very very happy i hope that's really helpful to anybody else thinking about doing this rigging don't forget we're going to be showing the full building of the shrouds out of dyneema the dyneema chain plates there's going to be the only metal in our uh, rigging is going to be bolts going through the mast like this and a few thimbles and low friction rings. Everything else is going to be Dyneema. So like, subscribe and leave your comments as we go forward with this idea that we think could be really helpful for others. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up.